Hey everybody and welcome to Bits of Board, where we're talking board games, miniatures, cards and dice. My name's Michael and today we continue on our journey through Machina Arcana's Horror in the Ice scenario. Last time we saw our explorers, they were dealing with some pretty interesting monsters on the map. So we're going to dive in straight where we left off into the new chapter of the campaign. You ready? Let's go. Chapter 3, Torn Journal. Our gory path led us to an abrupt end at an entrance to a room. In the centre, a book lay amidst assorted articles scattered all over the floor. It was instantly apparent that this tome was a journal and by lucky chance written in my language. The author's carefully penned memories descended into frenzied madness as the dates wore on. The work proved beyond doubt that the writer was a member of the House of Bliss. I could feel my spine tingling with disquietude as I comprehended that the cult could be here now at this very moment lurking in the shadows, weaving their deceitful webs like patient spiders awaiting their prey. The last entries in the diary were cryptic and delusional and clearly the result of an unhinged mind. There was a particularly dreadful chapter, missing a few pages, which described a ritual of reanimation in loving detail. All right, new chapter means a new setup for all of our tracks here. We're going to set the spawning tracker back up at seven and we're going to keep our horror tracker down at four. We've got a couple of new abilities here, but straight up you'll notice that this is not a blocking chapter. That means to get through this, we're going to need to find another chapter space. And if you've been paying attention, there's only ever one on each map tile, so we're going to have to get exploring. Now, this chapter does give us a couple of new abilities here. The first, Spawn Monster. For three points of stamina, we can actually go ahead and cause a monster to be spawned. And why the heck would we do that? Well, we're going to need that essence if we're going to push through the chapter. We also get a second ability, Banish Target Monster. This costs all six points of our stamina, a single point of essence, and we have to be in melee range. But if we do end up spawning something we can't handle, that is definitely an option. Now there's also an enters play effect here. We're gonna be adding all of the level two items into our decks. More powerful items? Heck yes. There is a slight drawback for us though, we've saved a couple of items, keeping them at the top of the deck for a little while, and now I've had to shuffle it up, mixing it in with all the important stuff. You know what? I think I'm willing to make that trade. <laughs> all right, now that this is all resolved, let's head back over to the map and finish off Hank's activation. Now we moved him down into the southeast corner, He's got, let's see, four points of stamina left. So let's go ahead and use both of these. We're going to start off by spending three points on the workbench. This is going to allow us to draw some item cards and I'm thinking we're gonna go all out apparel here, guys. So three apparel cards. Let's see how we go. Starting off, we've found the Proximity Bender. This is a headpiece that allows us to teleport by spending our essence. That could be a bit of fun. Uh, but we do have some level two stuff as well. The Aero Mantle here. We can move through units, which is super useful for positioning and stuff like that. And we gain three points of will for this one as well. So that is a definite possibility. The other card here we have Maybe Reconnoitres? I have no idea how to say that word. Um, when you explore a new map tile, restore six stamina. I mean, that's going to be pretty good for moving around. And we are just about to explore a new map tile, but I'm thinking the Aero Mantle is going to be the way to go. So let's go ahead and put that in Hank's inventory. I'm actually going to discard the other two and then we'll finish off the workshop action by taking an inventory action and we'll use that to equip the Aero Mantle. So that'll be pretty sweet to begin with. Um, we've got one point of stamina left and because of its low cost, I'm thinking we should hit up the recharge station. Okie dokie. So, this particular action, this is the first time we've seen it, we're going to roll the recharge dice here and we're going to gain whatever the result is. I'm hoping for a bit of a heal here, but we can also gain some stamina out of it as well. So let's hope and roll 
and we do get to heal just one point, but I'm very happy with that. It brings us from two hit points to three. All right, that is the end of that explorer phase. So we now move into the spawn phase. We'll roll our game dice firstly for Kim and a one means no spawn. So we reduce that track and now we'll roll for Hank. Seven. Ah, very close, but we do spawn here. Grab the top card of the monster deck and we are going to be going up against the Bayaki. Oh my goodness. This guy is tough. Five armor, two will, two health, four points of stamina and it's attack. Wow, that's a tough one. So for two points of stamina in melee range, we're going to be rolling the three most powerful attack dice floating around. And while this monster is playing, when any monster dies, the Bayaki is going to teleport to that monster's position. So he's a bit of a scavenger, but still he's going to be very tough to kill. All right, the Bayaki spawns as close to Hank as it can. And now we're in to the horror roll. All right, hopefully we can roll under the three here. No good, we get the 10. Draw our horror card, and what do we have? A glimpse of chaos. All of the monsters are going to gain this ability here. Target Explorer unequips one item. That's super annoying. <laughs> I wonder if the Bayaki will get to use it. Hmm. All right, all that's left is to increase that monster threat. Guys, we're getting really close to level two monsters here. I am scared. All right, so let's activate our brand new monster here. And he's going to start by moving towards the closest explorer. And that is of course going to be Hank. If he can get within range of two, he's going to try and activate that glimpse of chaos ability. If he can get into melee range, he's going to try and attack. But with only four stamina, he's not gonna be able to do that. He's gonna move one, two, three, four. He gets adjacent, but no longer has the stamina for the attack and his activation is done. And that is a big sigh of relief there, guys and gals, as we move into the explorer phase. All right, we'll start with Hank, uh, and I'm thinking we're gonna have to kite this Bayaki around a little bit until Kim is ready to make some attacks because I think she's about the only one that's gonna be able to get a reliable hit here. Otherwise, we'll need to roll like a four on our dice and that's that can be tricky. So let's play it just a little bit safe. We will spend all six stamina moving and Hank's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we can move through the monster here because of Hank's arrow mantle apparel, but usually we would be blocked from making such a run. That's about it for him though. So we move into Kim's activation. We'll start off by spending a point of stamina to move her closer to the recharge station. And then we're gonna spend one more point so we can utilize it. This is hopefully going to give us a health point. We're desperate and we get it. Fantastic. And now that we're slightly more healed up, we can concentrate on getting some stuff done. Now with four points of stamina left, I'm just going to use one of those to move back to where we started and then the other three to make an equip action. And it's with this that we're going to upgrade our rogue rifle with the new blood boost gun. As you can see, these have got matching upgrade symbols. And even though this is a two hand and a one hand weapon, we can now equip them at the same time. Meaning Kim is going to have the option for cheaper, less damaging shots or the expensive uber powerful ones. All right, that's it for the explorers. Let's head into the spawn phase. Now we did spawn a monster last round. So I'm just going to move that spawn marker back up to its default value. And now that we're all set, I'm ready to roll. So let's go for Kim first and we get an eight. Far out. We get a deep one. Three armor, three will, one health, five stamina. Crazy stuff there. And then the deep one's got a ranged attack at cost of two stamina where he's gonna roll the three most powerful attack dice. When he hits, we have an effect roll that can increase monster threat. And when this guy comes into play, we're also going to increase monster threat. So guys and gals, we're getting so close to level two. I hate it. Our deep one comes out and monster threat goes up. All right, now we're going to roll for Hank and it's just a two. So no spawn, we drop the spawn rate and we move into the horror phase, guys and gals. We need to roll low here. Ah, oh, it's a nine. Okay, so let's start off by drawing our horror card and we gain reaching tentacles. We're gonna teleport explorers to a spawn space. 
And rather than hanging out with the deep one, I'm thinking we're gonna head down here. So we'll chuck Hank down there and Kim close by. And that'd be just fine if that was all we needed to do. But the threat value goes up and so does our monster level. Now all of the level two monsters are going to be shuffled into the deck. We're gonna have some big fights on our hands coming up. With the horror phase done, we move into the monsters phase. Firstly, the Bayaki is going to activate four points of stamina. He's lost the ability to unequip our items, so he's just gonna concentrate on moving and melee attacking, and I'm okay with that because he's out of reach. So he's gonna go one, two, three, and four, and that is it for him. Next, we have the deep one moving. He's gonna head on over as well, but I don't think he's gonna be able to get in range for an attack. Five points of stamina here. One, two, three, four, and five. And I think we're doing just about as well as we can with that, that's not so bad. We move out of the monsters phase and into the explorers phase. And we'll begin by activating Kim because I wanna get this Bayaki out of the air. We'll spend three points of stamina loading up her rogue rifle. And unfortunately we're not standing next to a wall, are we? So we're gonna have to roll this 5L natural. You ready? Let's do this. Ah, oh, we nail that. We get a total of seven. I don't even know what I was worried about there. That is one point of health taken from the Bayaki. He's got one left, so let's spend our remaining three points to do it again. Big numbers again, please. Heck yes, we get a six out of that. That is the second point of damage done to the Bayaki and it is out of there. And even more so, we've removed the monster from the game. Usually, when we kill a monster, we just put it in the destroyed monsters discard pile kind of thing, and uh, once we run out of monsters in the monsters deck, we shuffle that up and we use them. But now that we've moved to level two, and this here is a level one monster, we are now removing this card from the game so he doesn't reappear in the spawn deck. Kim gains one essence for a job well done. This brings her to the actual total of one. <laughs> See my mistake in the last step. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. All right, into Hank's activation. And one, two. Look, we're in range for the ranged attack on our bouncing hurl bat. I'm thinking, let's give it a shot. What do we need for this deep one? Three plus? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll spend two points of his stamina here. Let's see how we go. Bam, we get a five. This guy only has a three armor and one health. Oh, the deep one is out of there. For making the kill, Hank gains an essence. And for making an actual hit with the weapon, it returns to him equipped. All right, I guess that means we can get, uh, get exploring. That's a load off, isn't it? Far out. So we've got four stamina left, and we've got an exit that we can head to down here. I'm gonna show you how the explore action works. So we're gonna go one and two, two points of stamina spent, and now we're gonna spend the remaining two exploring this potential location down here. Now what I've got here is a small pile of map tiles, all double-sided of course, all shuffled up and randomized as best as I can. Whenever we explore, we're gonna go ahead and take the bottom tile from the deck and we're going to add it to our map. We're gonna go ahead and line up the entrance marker with our explored location. And guys, look at this beautiful new tile to explore. We've got this beautiful open location with a ton of pits going on. If I didn't know any better, I'd call this a boss fight location for sure. Taking a look at it, each of the four corners contains a recharge space and either event spaces or chests. We've got our two spawning locations right next to the entrance there. That sucks. And then straight smack in the middle, we have our chapter space. But that's all we're doing for the moment. Our explorer phase is over and we're moving into the spawn phase, oh boy. We'll begin by rolling for Kim, a three. So that is a no spawn there, thank goodness. And now we roll for Hank, come on, come on, come on. That is a nine, so that is a spawn. We'll reset the spawn marker and now we're going to draw our monster. We get the Buapoth. 
two armor, two will, two health, and five points of stamina. This guy's got a melee attack that's going to cost him two points of stamina, and he's going to be attacking with the black and white dice. When this monster is hit, it moves two spaces towards a spawn space, so it's going to try and retreat every time we hit it. But before we do any of that, we've got to place this guy in, and when we do, the Buapoth is going to move up to two spaces. The monster spawns, and it's actually not going to do any movement because he's already orthogonally adjacent to an explorer. So we're going to leave him there and then move into the horror phase. We'll roll the dice, a 10, another horror event, and we get broken item. Here, when this card comes into play, we're going to destroy the top item card from each item deck. Whew, luckily, we just shuffled in all those new items, but I still hope we don't lose anything too important here. And as always, successful horror event, monster threat goes up. And now that that's done, we move into the monster phase. Let the attacks commence. This guy's going to get two attacks in with all of his stamina. Luckily for us, he's going to need fives to make the hit because Kim has some pretty decent armor going on. So we roll. First one misses. Amazing. Let's roll for the second one. Misses as well. Whew. Now, even though the Buell Poth's got one stamina left, he's not going to move anywhere because he's in the preferred space for adjacency against an explorer. So that'll be it for the monster phase and we move into the explorer phase. Now, we'll start with Kim, but I don't think we're going to just stand there and attack. Instead, I think we're going to move just one space so we can become adjacent with the wall. This way we get our plus one bonus to hit. And then we'll spend two points of stamina to make a shot with the blood boost gun. We're rolling the black and white dice, and all we need is a two here. Two and one, three. That is a great hit. Now, of course, it's not enough to totally kill off the Buellpoth, but it's all I was looking to achieve. From here, we're actually going to move Kim out onto the next map tile, and we're going to go one, two, three. Next, we'll activate Hank, again attacking with his bouncing Hurlbat, Two points of stamina, we unequip, and then we roll those dice. Just sneaking in there with a wound, and that is enough to take out the Buellpoth from the game. We gain the essence, and then I'm thinking we'll try something special. We'll spend one point of stamina moving onto our new map tile, not that we really need to, and then I'm thinking let's try and seal this spawn space so we can control the monster spawns just that little bit more. Now for us to complete this action, we're going to need to spend our remaining three points of stamina and then four points of essence. My goodness. Now we could split these between Hank and Kim. Kim has one, Hank has four. We're just going to spend it all from Hank taking him down from four to absolutely nothing. And in doing so, two things happen. We cover the spawn space with one of these explored markers so that it's no longer possible for monsters to spawn there. And then, and this is the main reason I wanted to show you, we cover the chapter space with a lit chapter space marker. We light the map's chapter space, which changes its costs for activation. Now, instead of costing three stamina and three essence, it's only going to cost us one stamina to activate. What's more, we're able to reduce the monster threat value by one. Alrighty, so that is it for our heroes. We now move into the spawn phase. We grab our game dice, and we're going to roll, hoping for a six and under, and a five, I'll take that. So that's Kim's roll done. We reduce the count here, and now I'm hoping for an under five. Yes, all right. So no monsters spawn this round. That means we can concentrate on healing up. We'll go ahead and roll for the horror value while we're here. A seven, so a successful horror event. I'm gonna draw that card. What do we get? Pillaging Horde. Destroy action spaces adjacent to monsters. Well, we have no monsters on the board, so no action spaces are destroyed. I'm very happy with that round. All that's left to do before we move into the Explorer's phase is to increase that threat value back up to one. We'll start the Explorer phase with Hank. Um, well, three points of stamina will get him over to the chests and the recharge station. So let's start there, and I'm thinking we'd better go a chest while we're here as well. So, 
We spend the final three points, we'll cover up one of those chests and we get to draw two cards. Now that we've got the level two cards around, I'm pretty excited to see what comes up. I'm still looking for some decent armor with Hank, so let's go ahead and draw from there. We draw up and we get two level one cards, so this may not be the best selection. Uh, we've got some jet boots. Um, <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. Uh, I really like this. Okay, for, so for two stamina here, we can choose a direction and move until we reach an obstacle. <laughs> that's insane. So uh, it also gives us one armor, so that's a good one. And then we've got the burst mail. Whenever you are hit, push adjacent units one space. We gain an armor, we gain a will from that, but we would have to replace the aero mantle that we've got there. Um, these jet boots are amazing. I want them. So we'll place that in Hank's inventory unequipped, and I'm gonna go ahead and discard this one here. That is not a bad start for us. Into Kim's activation. Now, mainly because Hank's laid claim to these other items up here, we're going to get Kim down and out to the southwest side of the map. So we're gonna spend, let's say, five of her six stamina to move. We'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to spend one point of stamina activating her scryer ability. We'll look at the top two cards of any item deck and rearrange them. Let's go weapons. And we've got a couple of upgrades here, both level two, which is awesome. The adjustable scope, which for one stamina will increase a weapon's range by two this round, max twice. And it will also increase a weapon's attacks roll by one just all the time. So that's pretty cool. And we also have the weaponsmith set, for one stamina, we can equip a weapon, augment a weapon, and then perpetually it will increase a weapon's arcane attack rolls by one. Eh, not so phased on that one. The scope is pretty cool, so we'll leave that one on top. And hopefully when it's time for Kim to pick up some items, we'll go there first. With our explorers activated, it's time to move into the spawn phase. We begin rolling for Kim, let's say. Roll. And we get an eight, that was so close to being a two, I saw that fall. Okay, so an eight means a monster spawns. So, we have our first level two monster, the Flying Polyp. Four armor, three will, two health, five stamina. This thing has a range to attack for two stamina, and we're gonna be rolling three white dice for that. And then when this monster is hit, it pushes adjacent units one space. This thing is also ethereal, which is the first time that we've seen this keyword come up. Basically, it renders the enemy untargetable unless a weapon says specifically it can be targeted. So we're going to be playing a bit of a running game with this thing on the map. And this, I think, is where the horror starts to set in. So we'll reset the spawn marker and now we're going to roll for Hank. Low numbers, yes. Down to four. So this thing drops, but we don't have to spawn a monster. All right, from the spawn phase, we move into the horror phase. It's a one, so no horror event. That's good stuff. Into the monster's activation. So the polyp has five stamina. It looks like it's gonna be able to get an attack in against Hank here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, at which point the polyp is now in range of Hank. So it'll stop there, spend its last two points of stamina, and we're gonna roll three white dice in attack. Now Hank's yet to equip his jet boots, so the monster's gonna need a three or more to make the attack work. Hey, hey, we did pretty good there. We survived that and we move into the Explorer's activation. We'll start with Hank because he's hanging around and this is gonna be a bit of a weird one. We'll start by opening a chest, three stamina down, and we're gonna take two apparel cards. We draw the Ritual Cloak, which causes our attacks to become arcane, also plus two to will, that's good. And then we get the Grotesque Mask. This gives us an ability for two stamina. We can become ethereal for the entirety of the round, but we also may have to discard the mask to do it. We also have an effect when in corner, you are ethereal. That's pretty fun. Um, look, for the sake of completing a full set of armor, I'm gonna take the grotesque mask and we'll discard the ritual cloak. Um, and we've got three points of stamina left. We could take the inventory action to equip everything, but it's not gonna be super useful to us at the moment. So I'm thinking we'll activate the recharge space back here. That'll cost one stamina. We'll roll the dice and we're gonna gain one health back. Exactly what we wanted. Um, um, let's cover that up. All that's left for us guys and gals is to move. 
Now what I'm actually going to do here is move down, but just so we're adjacent to the flying polyp, because next round, I want to banish this monster from the game. Let's move into Kim's activation. We're going to move down one, two. We'll spend three points of stamina to draw some items. And I'm thinking we'll take the top weapon because we know we want that. And I'll also grab a piece of apparel as well. There's that scope that we know it loves, so we'll be taking that. We also grab the apparel here, it's a level two. Uh, when you hit teleport within one space. Um, I don't think I want to keep that on the deck, so we'll mill that out of there. And we'll just take the upgrade. All right, we've got one stamina left, so let's go ahead and use that recharge space. Roll the dice. We gain two points of stamina, damn. <laughs> I guess we'll use her scryer ability twice. Let's have a look at the weapons for one and the apparel for the other. We have that weaponsmith set again, but we also see the stabilizing rail, which is going to increase attack rolls. And that is the upgrade symbol we're looking for as well. So let's pop that on top. We'll do the same for the apparel with our last bit of stamina and we find an exoskeleton, which looks amazing. And the curb stomper, when adjacent to a wall, increase your attack rolls by one. That would combo very nicely with Kim's natural ability. Ah, uh, I think I prefer the armor there, but I think I'd also be stupid not to get the curb stomper if we're gonna be utilizing it. So let's go ahead and put that one on top. Or at least we know there's nothing in the decks for Hank. <laughs> All right, that is the end of our Explorer's activation. Let's see if we can spawn some monsters. We begin by rolling for Kim, and it's a three, so there is no spawn there, but we'll drop the track, and now we'll roll for Hank. And that is a two. All right, we're getting very, very lucky with our spawn rolls here. We'll move over to the horror roll here. Let's see what happens. And it's a two, so that one drops down as well. All right, so that is a fairly uneventful round for us there. Um, not that I'm complaining. We head back into the monster's activation and the flying polyp is going to get attacking. Five stamina here, it's attacks only cost two, so we're going to get two different attacks in here. First one, boom. <laughs> that is a huge attack, it only needed three. So Hank is going to lose one of his hit points. It'll attack a second time. One, two, three, another hit. That is no good as well. So Hank is down to just two hit points again. Oh, that's okay though. The polyp's activation is almost over. He's got one stamina left, so we'll move him to be orthogonally adjacent. Into the explorer's phase we go, and you know exactly what's gonna happen here. Hank is going to start his activation by spending all six of his stamina. Oh no, guys and gals, I've just realized he doesn't have any essence on hand. We spent it all sealing the spawn location up here. That means we can't actually do our banish attack. What have I done? Ah, all right, let's move into plan B. Let's run. We're gonna start by spending four points of stamina. One, two, three, four. This puts us just on the other side of that door marker here. And you know what we're gonna do now? We're going to use our hook and rope. We'll spend a point of stamina and we are going to close an adjacent door and discard this event card. What does that mean? Well, closed door means both no monster line of sight and these suckers can't open doors unless a player is controlling them. So he's gonna have to go a long way around to come find us. Whew, all right quickly breathe a sigh of relief. He's got one hit point left, so we'll just move him off to the side, and this will allow Kim a good run up to the chapter space. We'll begin her activation, and what do we need to spend? Four stamina, so let's go. One, two, three, four. We are diagonally adjacent to the chapter marker, and because it's lit, we only need to spend one point of stamina to activate it. Now, before we do that, because that will end this episode today, let's go ahead and scry. We'll take a look at the artifacts deck, because hell, why not? We draw the Radiant Pyroliferous. <laughs> this will reduce adjacent monster attack rolls by one and increase adjacent explorer attacks by one. Uh, I love it. Um, and this one here, the Stygian Pendant, instead of losing the last health, restore one essence and you are ethereal this round. When you remove your Explorer Marker from this, discard the card. So this is essentially a second life and may be very useful for us going ahead because what, Hank's only got two hit points left? 
who knows how far we can get into this. But increasing rolls and allowing us to escape from monster hits, that is too good to miss out on. So we'll leave that one on top. All right, guys and gals, let's finish off this chapter. Kim spends her remaining stamina. We're gonna flip this bad boy over so that we have an explored token. We move to chapter four, missing piece. The corridors were dank and threatening. We tried to ignore the growing unease as we wound our way past the softly throbbing walls. Halfway through such a passage, we stumbled upon a piece of parchment, and I guessed that this was a missing piece from the journal. We squinted in the gloom to make sense of the illustration, a blue meteor plummeting from the heavens towards a glittering white mountain. I felt my gorge rise as I absorbed the extent of what I was seeing. Were the small tentacles protruding from the blazing sphere just an artist's fanciful depiction? Was it? Could it be possible that it was alive? The page also spoke of a secret place far below and gave us detailed instructions of how to reach it from the entrance. For now, it would have to wait as time was running short and we should return to base before nightfall. Now, of course, with a new chapter, we have a new spawn value and a new horror value. So we'll set them up now. And we've also got just a couple of extra chapter abilities to be aware of. Now, the first one is kind of interesting. And had we not used Hank's bound event earlier, we would have been able to destroy that bound event to gain three points of essence, which is a wonderful reward. But unless we got stuck into the remaining event spaces now, well, I don't feel like we're gonna be using it. Now we have one other important effect. It's an enters play ability, and it requires us to place an exit token. Here, we're going to place our exit tile along any one of the edges on our activator's current map tile. In this case, Kim can choose any of the edges as long as it's not marked with one of the entry markers. And for us today, that is going to be our most accessible exit point. We finish resolving the chapter effects. We move back around into the spawn phase. We'll start off by rolling for Kim. She scores an eight, which means a monster is going to be spawned. We draw a moon beast, which looks to be a fairly tricky enemy. Four armor, three will, one health, and five points of stamina. This guy has a melee attack with two black and two white dice, and a ranged attack that will pull our explorers into range. The moon beast also gains an additional effect. When the monster is adjacent to a wall, it becomes ethereal, and we know how much trouble those monsters are to deal with. The moon beast appears. We'll go ahead and roll for Hank now and we get a four, which is underneath the current spawn event, so we'll drop that. All right, that done, we move into the horror phase and we'll go ahead and roll that dice, gaining a four here as well. Another missed horror event. Now that that's done, we move into the monster activation. We'll begin by activating the flying polyp. He's going to get two attacks in against Kim there. But with five armor, I feel like she's going to do okay. Let's go with its first roll. One, two, three, not enough. Second attack roll coming right up. One, two, three again. Both of these attacks against Kim do nothing. The polyp still has one point of stamina left, so it's going to move towards our explorer, but we're gonna try and keep it in range here. So it moves down, trying to find a way across the chasm. We next move into the moon beast's activation, and it doesn't look like it's going to be able to get in range of Kim, which is really good, but it does mean he's going to try and chase us down, trying to get in through the last remaining open door. It spends all five points of stamina. One, two, three, four, five, and the monster activation is done. I think it's time for us to leave this hellish environment, so we'll begin our activation with Hank. Let's begin spending three points of stamina to unlock this chest cover up the space because I'm thinking we really need some better armor. We draw the top two cards of the deck and we already know what these ones are. For starters, we have the curb stompers, which we know Kim really wants, but we also have the exoskeletons, which I think might be a change of pace for Hank. So he's going to take them in hand, leaving the curb stompers on top of the deck, and then we are going to get the hell out of there. 
We've got three points of stamina left and we'll use them. One, two, three, onto the exit tile. Onto the exit tile, we disappear from the map. Now nothing happens yet as far as resolving the exit tile. We've got to wait till all of our explorers are off the map. So next we move into Kim's activation. Six stamina to play with. Yeah, we could take a pot shot at the flying polyp and maybe that would be a good idea, but it would definitely delay our leaving this map tile. And I do think it's time for a break. So we're gonna spend all six points of stamina heading for the exit. Can we make it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we do. Kim disappears from the map and we resolve our exit tile, finally. Basically, we are going to banish every single monster left on the map. That is, the monster acts as though it's destroyed, except players do not receive any essence for doing so. Next, we check if any of the banished monsters are underneath our current level, and yes, the moon beast is. So this, instead of getting returned to the destroyed monster discard deck, is removed from the game. The polyp, on the other hand, does return to fight another day. And finally, before moving on to the next chapter, we're going to gather up all the map tiles, flip them over, and place them on the bottom of the map tile deck so that they will eventually cycle back through in our adventure. That done, we move into the next chapter. Chapter five, return to base. Here, we'll set up our trackers. Six for monster spawn, four for horror event, and we go ahead and resolve all of its enters play abilities. Here, for us, all of our explorers will go back to maximum health. We're going to add all of the level three items into the decks. Players may trade with each other and equip whatever items they want by using their inventories. And then finally, we're going to place a new entry token, which means drawing a new map tile from the deck, placing it down and continuing through. Now, this is where we're going to call it. I feel like this is a great opportunity to pack the game back up in the box to have a break because guys and gals, there are more games to be played, but I don't wanna leave you here empty handed. So I'll give you a taster of what this chapter is all about. Chapter five, return to base. At last, fresh, cold air. How soothing and clean. We've left the horrors of that place behind us for the moment, but I know that we must return there, and soon. We must put an end to whatever is happening inside that awful mountain. Something perverse and disastrous is being prepared there. I can feel it. During our own exploration, the others had investigated the remains of another airship, presumably the Nostromo, of which Dr. Alden's memoirs had spoken. The excavation team had been able to salvage some obscure, arcane mechanisms which we hope to study and use to our advantage upon our return. All right, we made it through. This is our first major checkpoint in the scenario. We get to fully heal up our explorers and that is a massive load off. We got rid of a couple of really tough monsters on the board as well. Stoked to say goodbye to them, but I'm sure we will have to come up against them again <laughs> far out. Now, I reckon I'll get one more video up for you guys, hopefully by Christmas day, if not, not long after that. Um, but then I might have a bit of a break till the new year, get into those new releases and that sort of thing. So hopefully I'll have some new content for you shortly. But for the moment, you guys and gals out there, have a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful new year. Take care of yourselves, take care of your family. But before all long, we'll be back here celebrating our nerdy little hobby that we got going on here. So till then, guys and gals, take it easy. If you've enjoyed the videos today um, and you want to see more, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and do all the things that you guys can do to help this channel grow but besides that we are about done so as always my name is Michael this is Bits of Board we'll catch you next time <laughs>